My name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 53. Lesson number 53 out of the third edition, hence 3053. We are on page number 257, example 2.9.2, .2, part B. As I explained yesterday, as I explained in yesterday's video, part A that we did yesterday was the one that, that we did that we do see in the book. That is the one that is given in the book. Here we're going to do second part, part B, which is not in the book. It's an extra one. Okay? Again, same idea. We're looking for points of intersections of points of intersection of parabola and a straight line. Here's the equation of the parabola. It says find the intersection of the line of the given line and the parabola. The parabola that is given to us has an equation that looks like this. Parabola we are told is equal to minus x squared plus 2x minus 1. Let's work on that first because we're going to need some room here before I put down the equation on the line. Let's work on that first, shall we? Let's plot it, shall we? Very quickly. To plot a parabola typically, it's a good idea to have 5 points. 3 is not enough. Let's have 5 points. We can have 0, positive 1, negative 1, negative 2, and a positive 2. I just want to make sure that they are properly spaced. Let me, it's, it's, it comes out better if you just do it freehand. There we go. 1, 2, 1, 2. There we go. Those are the 5 points. 0, positive 1, negative 1, negative, positive 2, and negative 2. So when x is 0, we can clearly see y is negative 1. When x is 0, y is negative 1. So let's put it here. here. y is negative 1. When x is 0, y is negative. That's one point where it goes through. Uh, when x is 1, when x is 1, I'm not going to do it all out, we just have to follow it here. We're going to get negative 1 here, and a positive, positive 2 and a negative 1. Or they're going to cancel out. Negative, negative 2 and a positive is going to be 0. When x is 1, y is 0. When x is 2, when x is 2, we're going to get a negative 4. We're going to get a negative 2, a negative 4, a positive 4, and a negative 1. They're going to cancel out, and we're going to have negative 1. Of course, we're going to have negative 1, because it's... There, there it is. It's taking a shape like that. When x is positive 2, oh, so that's, that, was, that was it, that's negative 1. When x is negative 1, it's going to be negative 1 because negative 1 is going to become, and this is going to be negative 2 and negative 1, we're going to get negative 4. This is when x is equal to negative 1. x is equal to negative 1, it drops down to 4. So this was 1, 2, 3, 4, right here. And therefore, the other one is going to be right, right here. The other point is going to be right here. When, when x, x is positive 2, or rather, when x is positive 3, let's not do, I was going to, I was going to do, I was going to do 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. There is no point in it. Let's do this point here, when x is equal to 3. Because that's where the parabola is. When x is equal to 3, when x is equal to 3, it's going to be negative 9, a negative 6, and a negative 1. That is not giving us what we need here. When x is equal to 3, oh, this should be positive 6. When x is equal to 3, 2 times 3 is positive 6. A negative 9 and a, and a positive 6 is going to give us negative 3, and a negative 1 and a negative 4, right there. That point there is, there we go, negative 9 and negative 1 is negative 10, and a positive 6 is negative 4, and that's what this is. This is 3 and negative 4. And there is our parabola. Now 
No, here's the butt part. Here's the butt part. But to, to figure out the shape of the parabola in this manner was a very childish way, very simplistic way. It's a very simpleton, it's something what a simpleton might do. The question is, is there any way that we could have seen the shape of this parabola without having to do this mumbo jumbo, without having to plot it out like this? Could we have shown this the same concept? Could we have manifested the same idea that this parabola, first of all, is upside down, it's an upside down parabola, and it shifted one unit to the right. The line of, line of symmetry for this parabola is x is equal to 1. That is the line of symmetry right here. It is shifted. x is equal to positive 1 is the line of symmetry. In other words, it shifted one unit to the right. This parabola shifted one unit to the right and it's upside down. The question is, could we have shown that, uh, that uh, these, uh, could we have manifested these two facts algebraically without having to actually plot the bloody thing. Let's find out. Let's find out if we can do that, shall we? Here's the equation that is given to us. Let's work with it. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to rewrite here. It says negative x squared, positive 2x, and a negative 1. Let's see what we can do here. That is our y rather. So I'm taking the the method that we're going to use is what is known as completing the square. Okay, listen very carefully. In this method, in completing the square method, the coefficient of x squared must be one. Coefficient of x must be must be unit. But that is not the case here. Here we have a coefficient of negative 1. We have a coefficient of negative 1. We have a coefficient of negative 1. That won't do because it was negative x. You understand? That won't do. So if if there were if, if x squared has a coefficient of 9 to get rid of it we would have divided the entire equation by 9 to make, make it a unit coefficient of 1. If this had if, the, if x squared has a coefficient of quarter, we would have multiplied the entire equation by 4 to get rid of it. x squared must have a unit coefficient. Here we have a negative one. Let's take out negative common. So we're going to go here, we're going to take out, we're going to remove negative one as a common, and hence making the x squared with a positive coefficient of 1. You see that? And if you take out x common, uh, negative one common, positive 2x is going to become negative 2x, and positive one is going to become a negative one is going to become positive one, and that is our y. Let's pick it up on the top. Let's pick it up on the top. I'm going to rewrite this thing on the top. And instead of writing negative negative one, we're just going to say negative, and this is what we're dealing with: x squared minus two x plus one is equal to y. Okay, watch what happens. Now we're going to complete this square. Now we're going to complete the square. Completing the square means we have to write it in this form a squared plus 2ab plus b squared because that's a complete square. This quantity can be written as a plus b whole squared or a minus b, doesn't matter. It has to be complete squared. So let's do that, shall we? So this negative is going to stay outside. This x squared is already squared. Oh, so here we're dealing with minus time. So we, we, here we're dealing with negative 1. So this is what we're going to this is what we're going to complete. X squared minus two a, which is our x, and b, which is going to be one, because we have to have two x in here. So two times x times one is going to negative two times x times one is going to give us back our negative two x. And now we need so we have x squared, which we have our a squared. We have negative we have negative two ab, negative two ab, but we need b squared. B squared is right here. This is our b squared. Now we can close this thing. Are you with me so far? And now I'm going to erase all of these other things because so that it doesn't look very ugly. There we go. Now what we have done here, what we have done here is what we have done here is that we have introduced this positive one squared. It wasn't there. 
actually this is this is already oh that's right there we don't have to do anything at all that's that right there oh this is very straightforward this is very simple this was actually much simpler than uh, than that if you watch the previous uh, two three days you will see the completing the score actually does not come out to be so simple all the time had it been some other numbers we would have had to do some other manipulation but this is it this is it x squared minus 2x minus 2ab plus b squared so this is simply minus x minus 1 all squared there we go we are all done this is our this is our y this is our y this is our parabola this is our parabola our parabola I'm going to rewrite this equation our parabola is right here it says y is equal to it says y is equal to negative what's the significance of this negative this negative tells us the parabola is upside down and then x minus 1 whole squared x minus 1 tells us that it is shifted it is shifted one unit to the right which is exactly what we see here it is shifted one unit to the right the line of symmetry is x plus one is a standard parabola you simply pick up your standard parabola you flip it and you shift it one unit to the right and voila this is what it is and this is what we saw there okay, enough of that now let's look at the equation of the line that's it we're done that's our parabola the line that is given to us is like this It says y is equal to x minus 3. And now I shouldn't have erased that. So let's call this thing f of x. Because they are both y's, obviously. We can't have that. Let's call it g of x. Okay? So here is our, our value. Here is the x value. Here is the value of f of x. And here is the value of y of x. Uh, g of x, rather. f of x. f of x being... The parabola and g of x is going to be the line. So we started out by 0, uh, and then we did 1, 2, 3, and then we have negative 1 right there. We started out with 0, we did 1, 2, and 3, and negative 1. So when x was 0, we found out that y was negative 1 for parabola. When x was 1, y was 0. When x was 2, when x was 2, y was negative 1 again. And when x was 3, when x was 3, y was negative 4. When x was negative 1, it was negative 4. Let's see what happens when we, when we find the points here, because it's very simple. I'm hoping that maybe we can find a point of intersection in a very simplistic way without having to do it algebraically. Let's see what happens. So let's begin then. When x is 0, y is negative 3. When x is 0, y is negative 3. So that won't do it. When x is 1, 1 minus negative 3 is going to be negative 2. That won't do it. When x is 2, when x is 2, 2 minus negative 3, oh, there you go. Voila. There is the first point of intersection. What do you know? There is the first point of intersection. Let's continue. When x is, when x is 3, when x is 3, this is going to be 0. When x is negative 1, when x is negative 1, when you put a negative 1 here, negative 1 and a negative 3, oh, there you go, what do you know? There is our other, second point of intersection. Let's plot this line, shall we? Let's plot this line. It's very straightforward. When x is 0, y is negative 3. When x is 0, y is negative 3. 1, 2, 3, somewhere here. And pick another point if you like. Uh, how about when x is 3, y is 0. When x is 3, 1, 2, 3, y is 0. Right there. There you go. You can clearly see the four points. 1, 2, 3, 4. And these two points, this one, this one, and that one are the intersection. There is a straight line. Let's see if I can use a different color. Right here, the blue one. Pay attention, I don't want to mess it up. There is a straight line, and there are those two right here this one, and that one right there are the point of intersections. As you can see, one positive one, positive two, positive two, and a negative one. There we go. Positive two, the next is positive two, 
both functions have the value of negative 1. That's right there. Let's call it point A. Let's call it point A. And the second one we found is when x is negative 1, both functions have a value of negative 4. When x is negative 1, both functions have a value of negative 4. Let's call that point B. There we go. And that's it. That's all there was. Are we done? Not quite. Let's solve this thing algebraically, shall we? Let's solve it algebraically instead of doing it geometrically. Just now we solved it geometrically by plotting it. Let's solve it algebraically. We need the room, obviously. So here is our, here is our line. And here is our parabola. We're going to equate the two. So x minus 3 has to equal this quantity. And that's all it is. That's our parabola. And the line was x minus 3. This x minus 3 represents the y, y coordinate of the point of intersection. And this quantity, negative x squared plus 2x minus 1, represents against the y coordinate of the, of the parabola at the point of intersection. And of course, those two, they have to be equal at the point of intersection. Both the x coordinate and the y coordinate have to be equal. Let's solve it, shall we? I'm going to bring the x to the other side, subtract x from both sides. So we're going to end up with negative x squared, negative 3x, when we bring the x there. When we bring this negative 3 to over there, when we add negative positive 3 to both, it's going to become positive 3 and a negative 1 is going to become negative 2 equals 0. Let's multiply the entire equation by, by negative, negative 1. So we can end up with negative x, uh, we can end up x squared, positive 3x, and positive 2. Let's hope that, uh, let's hope that I did not muck it up already. I believe I have. Did I make a mistake already? Yes, I have. When this x goes over there, it becomes a negative x, and a positive 2x and a negative x is going to give us negative x, just 1x. Let me start again. This is all wrong. So we have a negative x squared. We have a negative x. Let's bring everything on this side. Negative x squared, when you bring it to this side, it will become positive x squared. When we bring 2x on this side is going to become negative 2x, negative 2x and a positive x is going to become negative x. And we bring this one, negative 1 here, it's going to become positive 1, positive 1 and a negative 3 is going to be negative 2, 0. That's what we are dealing with. So we are looking for two numbers whose product has to be negative 2 and whose sum has to be negative 1. It's very simple. Two numbers whose product has to be negative, one, negative 2, we are looking for two numbers whose product has to be negative 2 and whose sum has to be negative 1. What are those two numbers? Well, a negative 2 and a positive 1 should do it. Negative 2 and a positive 1 add up to negative 1, and negative 2 times positive 1 will give us negative 2. So we have factors of negative 2 and positive 1. So negative 2x and a positive x minus 2 is equal to 0. Take out x as a common factor, I'm going to pick up speed, so we end up with x minus 2. And here, an, a positive x and a negative 2 have nothing in common, so we're going to take out simply 1 as a common factor, and we're going to end up with negative, we're going to end up with x minus 2 equals 0, and then we're going to take out x minus 2 as a common factor from this quantity and that quantity. When we take out x minus 2 as a common factor, we end up with x from here and positive 1 from there, that's equal to 0, and that in turn implies that x is equal to either positive 2 or x is equal to negative 1, which is exactly what we found. At the point of intersection, x is positive 2, 1, and 2, right there. Where did we go? That was, a, that was, a, that was the y-axis, 1 and 2, right there. 1 and 2, x is equal to positive 2 or x is equal to negative 1, right there. Now that we have the value of x, we can substitute back we, we can substitute this value back in either of these two equations, either, either the equation of the line or the parabola, and find out the y coordinates. Let's find out, shall we? Y is going to be, since line is simpler to use, I'm going to use line. When it's positive 2, positive 2 and a negative 3, it's going to give us negative 1. Positive 2, negative 1, right here. 1, 2, positive 2, and a negative 1. Right there is point A. That's our point A. 
or when x is negative 1, we put it in here, negative 1 and negative 3 is going to give us negative 4. And that's our point B right there. When x is negative 1, y is negative 4. So that's the algebraic solution. There is not much in it. Very straightforward. Very simple. Tomorrow, we will deal with what is known as a piecewise function. Piecewise function where we deal with absolute values and how to plot a function involving absolute value. Okay, which is going to be 2.9.3. I want to say 2.9, yes, 2.9.3 at the bottom of page 257, the next page. If you need to get hold of me, if you wish to work with me, if you want to hire my services, if you want me to help you uh, prepare for the exam, if you would like to hire me as your tutor, you can get hold of me at 1-800-808-PREP, 1-800-808-7737, or you can email me at prepsat at aol.com. Okay? Bye now.